the hard part about owning your own business is patience and the journey and understanding that it's not a destination, but it's an ongoing process. It's not a viral video moment. That's not what it is, right? Um, I think when you understand that, then you understand, I do have something to offer to the world. My name is Zaylee Barclay. I am a video content creation coach and a Thinkific expert, and I am a creator. Okay guys, MTV Studio Cribs take one. <laughs> Welcome to my studio. It's actually a maker space, so it's a huge room that's usually a bed and bath for two. This is where I keep my lights. Here we have my little makeup cart, and here we have something that means a lot to me. My partner actually drew this because as a creator, Man, like it's hard for us to sell on the whole, right? <laughs> but just remembering to sell every day is something that even if it's a tiny thing, something that I need to remember. Think and grow rich. You don't have to read a black choice, but I'm black. So <laughs> I'm reading a black choice, but think and grow rich. This is something I, every quarter I pick it up because you know, you get busy, you lose sight of what you want. You lose sight of how to visualize and create your own definition of what your life should be like. Growing up in Trinidad was an amazing experience. I think about the trees running around barefoot, just being around my grandmother in her shop. So she had a shop where she would sell goods and we had like a vocational school right next door and the students loved her. So she would be up at 5 a.m. making what we would call bakes selling to these students, like making sure that they're nourished to go to school. And I would sit at her feet in the shop and that's where she would teach me things. Like, you know, if this person gives me 75 cents and the cookie costs 50 cents, like how much should I give them back? And as I grew, she taught me about money and profits. She was a creator herself. I mean, seeing her make something out of nothing, that was really powerful. I decided to move to the U.S. because being a kid, <laughs> I would be thinking, oh, I want to go up away to this place. I wanted to start school here. I got a scholarship and then I moved from Trinidad to the U.S. I knew that I would want to study business in college. I always dreamed about having my own business. I just didn't know what that business was. I went to a college where, listen, people had money. Since it was a private school, I did have a scholarship, but there were other things that I had to pay for, like, you know, uh, you know, my books or living expenses and things like that. So I love style and I love fashion and I had to figure it out. <laughs> so for me, my, uh, you know, creativity was like, okay, so I don't have money. How can I look cute on a budget? So I realized that if I go to the bead store, I can buy a lot of these beads for a little bit of money and then make my own jewelry. So I started doing that because of a lack of resources. And after that, like I would wear it and people would ask me like, where did you get that? Like, how can I get one? Like, what is this that you're wearing? I've never seen it anywhere. I used to give jewelry away at first. I feel like we have a part of our, our creative brain that is afraid of sales or that feels like even though I'm good at this thing, I don't deserve to be paid for it. So let me just give it away. And then my dad figured it out. Like you're, you're doing what? You're giving away your, your stuff that you're making. So he started teaching me about cost of goods and you know, how to decide the pricing on, you know, this piece of jewelry, how to sell it for a profit. And I remember being petrified to sell, like, oh my gosh. One story that he shared with me that really made me like, oh man, I can do this, was when he opened up a physical location on, a, on another side of Trinidad. He would have to drive like three hours to work. And he told me the story about, um, sorry dad, the first day that he opened up shop, how scared he was. And I think, See, like for me, my dad is Superman. Like, you know, like he can do no wrong. He's not afraid of anything. Like he's so amazing. Him telling me that 
really made me realize, oh, so you're as scared as I am. <laughs> I can do this. Making money from something you created, um, it feels unreal. It, it's, it, it, it has two ways of, of feeling. It feels like I don't deserve this <laughs> because it was so easy for me to make and I enjoyed doing it, which is different from what we're taught about work. But um, it also felt really good. Like, what if I made a hundred of these? <laughs> I started blogging in college because I needed a way to get my thoughts out. Then the craziest thing is as my blog evolved, I started selling my clothes that I was making and my partner and I would go out and take pictures and do photo shoots and things like that. And I would integrate those pieces into my blog post. Now looking back, I was selling. Right, so I was doing content marketing. I didn't know that then. <laughs> so um, yeah, my blog kind of evolved with my journey. So we would get huge lists of like, you know, bloggers and public publications that they wanted to, you know, send stuff out to. And I just wouldn't see any black bloggers. I wouldn't see anyone like myself. And so I was like, wait, <laughs> I have a blog. <laughs> You know, we have the good voice and the bad voice that was saying, well, it's not possible because if there's no one like you or no one that looks like you, then forget it, girl. And then there was the other voice that was like, but yes, it can happen. <laughs> I saw myself for a brief moment being in corporate, you know, the whole New York City corporate dream of that corner office. And I realized probably after three months, that this is not it <laughs> at all. This is not what I want to do. I do not want to work in a high rise and wear heels on the train every day. And then one day I was going into work and this guy in this suit started bawling his eyes out on the train. And everyone sat as if nothing was happening. That was defining for me. That was when I knew what I'm gonna do is go back to babysitting because I would be able to work on my business from morning to one or two, and then I could hop on the train and go pick up the kid that I was babysitting. People thought I was crazy. And I even thought I was crazy for a bit. I remember having to take my kid around my old job and feeling so much shame of Man, like, you know, I left the opportunity to really grow and expand in corporate, but I'm babysitting. It was a, a double dance back and forth. Like, yes, I'm doing the right thing, but also like, you have to be some kind of crazy to think that you can do this and build a business. So, you know, and people thought I was crazy. Yes, they did. <laughs> they still do, that's okay. Listen, if I want something, it depends on me to be intentional about it. And so I had to understand not everyone understands your vision. Your vision is your vision. It's not up to anyone else. When you get where you're going, they will understand. Now I can look back and say, whoa, that was really confident, but that was more of purpose. Like, this is what I have to do. Now I'm thinking about a lyric from Nas. He didn't want to be someone that said, oh, I was, I was gonna be a rapper. I was almost a rapper. I did not wanna be that almost. Like, if I'm doing this, I gotta figure out how it's gonna happen because I don't wanna say, oh, I was almost a successful creator. I would, on the way to work, write blog posts on the train. And writing on the train is the most soothing thing ever. Cause you have 45 minutes to do what you want. You can change your life in those 45 minutes. You can't do anything else. You might as well as do something that's gonna move you further. I think those intentional moments are moments that we don't think about. Like it's more of like, man, I gotta ride the train. But do you know what you can do in that time? So that built consistency in business and helped me show up even more. In documenting and sharing all of that, 
people really started asking me, how are you so confident on camera? Like, what are you doing? Like, I wish I could do this. And that showed me a different need. So I started um, hosting online courses, like workshops. I started doing YouTube. I started getting paid from YouTube. And then I realized you gotta double down on this thing. <laughs> That's when I started feeling like, okay, so you're at home working on your own business and then you're going into work. And in doing that, I realized, hey, I can expand the income that I'm making by taking back my own hours at that time. I think that as creatives, we don't realize that when you let go of the thing that you feel like you need, something even bigger and better will open up. But you will never know if you don't let go. It was a huge decision of there's still that income coming from someone like on autopilot, right? So now you gotta do this for yourself. And even though it was less than what I was making, I was still scared. But then I really realized that I was keeping myself back. I, I really needed to give it a hundred. <laughs> Um, my grandmother died. I remember one thing that she would always say was faith is but the size of a mustard seed. And I think it's a passage like in the Bible, they even highlighted it at her funeral. They had a mustard seed. Um, I had never seen a mustard seed. I had heard her talk about this mustard seed all my life. I had never seen one and it was so tiny, we had to have it in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> and so seeing a mustard seed for the first time really showed me that I know that your faith in yourself is bigger than a mustard seed. So you just gotta keep believing. And just knowing what she stood for, I had to give it my all. I had to give it my all. When I left babysitting, I was in a space where I knew I needed to grow. I had people that were so afraid and so much fear around me, especially with what I was doing. So I needed a fresh start. I needed a clean slate. I needed to be intentional, especially about my business. I had a client that lived here. I asked her one day, like, Cole, what is Dallas like? And she said, it's nothing like New York. You don't want to come here. And I said, I'm coming. I remember coming to Dallas and sitting down in my empty apartment and feeling like there is no cushion. I have $5,000 and I need to, I need to make this thing work. But it also felt like someone turned off a generator in the back of my head. Like it just went silent. It felt like I can finally hear myself think. So I launched this online course and I felt like everyone was going to like just be dying to buy it because of all of the things I had been reading on the internet. It was a course on teaching people how to do self photography, how to understand Instagram, how to use Instagram. And it was called self portraits that sell. Had a really good turnout to the webinar and nobody bought it. I was like, I am done with this. I am not doing it ever again. And I had said that before and logged off for two hours and then logged back on. But this time I stayed off for like a week. And then I told myself like, girl, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> like, this is what you're supposed to do. Let's go again. That's what you're supposed to do as a business owner, right? If a huge business does a launch, they don't necessarily throw it out the window. They probably come from a different angle. Sometimes it's, it's just your marketing, it's just your sales. As creators, we wanna hide away and do the thing and then say, kabam, <laughs> this is what I've done. But what I should have done was took my audience through the journey of creating this thing. I wasn't nurturing my audience for that sale. I just sold to them, right? Because it's what I had seen other people doing. So I launched again and I sold two spots after that. And I turned it off of me. It's not about me. I know how to do this already. It was about the people, right? So I started focusing on my people, the people that I was creating for. And I started thinking about like, I mean, why would they want this? What's the benefit for them? And just started thinking differently. So just shifting my me into we. So for someone who has tried everything, you feel like it's not working, try again. 
you got to reevaluate. You got to go back and see what what can I do differently. A lot of us are comparing our uh, failures to the biggest wins on the internet. So you might say, so and so told me I need to launch a course, and I launched it, and I made zero dollars. Right? Go back and evaluate like what you've been doing to see if there's anything that you could improve. It takes honesty. You got to say, did I really give a hundred percent to this thing? And a lot of times you'll hear that answer inside of you and it's going to say, well, no, you didn't. <laughs> or you could have, you could have been more prepared or this could have been done differently. So I think that the answer is inside of you and the answer for your faith is also inside of you. That mustard seed is inside of you as well. Like, you know, now is not the time to give up. You genuinely know that. So you don't need me to tell you that you need to continue on. <laughs> you know you do. <laughs> I started an email list back then and it has changed my business in so many ways. I remember writing emails and thinking that no one is reading this. And then people would reply and respond and I'd be like, oh my gosh, people are reading this. Just from doing that and being consistent with it, like obviously people began to buy, um, you know, and then we started adding things like snippets and, and stuff to emails with, with calls to action. So I'm not always selling, but if you would like, here are a few things that you can purchase down below. I am that person that will always push through no matter what. And grief taught me that this is not the time to push through. You need to step back a bit. That's when I had to realize that, listen, I can double down on courses and digital products and experiences like those. So that's what really held me in that time, being able to sell products where they were already recorded and created, sell products that I had already created and send out an email sequence and let people know what was available. That also played a part in helping me be able to recover, take that time away, which is so scary for business owners, stepping away from your business. In 2017, I realized that I was making a full-time income as a creator and I'm still getting adjusted to, oh my gosh, like this thing is real. <laughs> I have dream come true moments every day. <laughs> Sometimes it might be an email of a brand that wants to feature me or work with me. Sometimes it might come through a client, like experiencing success based on something we've gone through. Another dream come true, which I am transparently I'm still adjusting to is just the ability to create an income. That feeling will never get old to me. I have, I would say, probably about seven streams of income. Consulting, educational experiences, using video content. We have the Star True Grow Video Academy where we help people really get on camera. And I also do one-to-one -one coaching. I have affiliate income and from YouTube and brand sponsorships and online courses, masterclasses, digital products. August 4th, 2011, 2.26 a.m. What was I doing? Cause now I'm, I'm dead asleep at that time. So my name is Daily Esteem. I say what I feel like, sometimes at the right time, sometimes not, but that's okay. I am me. I like manis, petties, designing and shopping. I am a dreamer, all caps. <laughs> that's the biggest thing you should know about me. My dreams are all that matter because my dreams are what inspire elevation from the world that I presently live in. When I dream, I'm whatever I want to be, whenever I want to be, wherever I want to be. I know there are a lot of you out here that do that too. They say dreaming is an act of pure imagination, which if it were available in waking, would make every man a Dante or Shakespeare. I don't believe this. In every possible way, we are all a Dante or a Shakespeare. I know this because when I write, I think, what would Shakespeare write? Ooh, and I become him. Wow. Yes, he had hair billowing down to his earlobes. I have dreadlocks. Yes, he was a writer, actor, and a businessman, and I am by all means all of those and more. Ooh. I believe I am a modern day Shakespeare. You're still reading, right? Good, because I'm still dreaming. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Wow. How does that make you feel? What about that makes you cry? Um, because I, this was 2011 and I still believe all of these things and I still am all of these things. My grandmother would say she knew. She always told me how bright I was. She knew my potential. I remember um, right before she passed, like my cousins would stream YouTube to the television and that would make her so excited because she thought I was on TV. When I think about myself in Trinidad and now, that girl would be really proud. <laughs> like, I can honestly say like that girl would be like, I wanna be you. And that feels good.